Dad, how do you find anything on this cabinet? I don't. I just root through it until I find what I'm looking for. Huh. <laughs> and of course, that just won't do. So I decided to build my dad a paint rack holder in order to better organize all of this. I started off by cutting two sides and all the shelves to size, using mostly the super jaws with a circular saw, then moved to the table saw and cut a slight angle on the front and back of all the shelves. However, before attaching everything, I counterbored a hole in both of the sides for a rod to be placed in later. Then we started attaching everything using glue and screws. We did use a pilot hole to prevent cracking here. Okay, quickest project in the world, I think. For the spray bottles, I used an aluminum rod my dad had. So we were gonna stop here, but my dad still has plenty of wall space. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and expand on this to organize some of the other things in my dad's shop. Does that sound good? So after designing something quick in SketchUp, we went and purchased more material then started cutting it all to size. Now I do have a set of plans on my website that has a cut list if you're interested in building the same project. We took the sides and the bottom and started building what will be a set of drawers. Now these drawers are not gonna be on sliders, but rather they're gonna sit on a shelf. And this is just a um, cheaper way of making drawers. We joined these using glue and screws Again, pilot holing just to prevent cracking. After getting the shelves installed, we went ahead and installed a second side piece just to give it a more sturdy footing. Then it was on to making all of the drawers. I first cut everything to size, then took the front pieces and the side pieces and cut in a dado along the bottom. And you can see here on the assembly process what I'm talking about. So the front and the side have that dado, but then the back piece is cut down so that it's just right above that dado slot so that whenever it's glued and nailed on, you could just slide in the bottom and you have yourself a drawer. Then I just repeated the process to assemble all of the other drawers. And these do slide a lot better once you put wax on the sides. My dad found some old knobs that he polished up and painted, and so we went ahead and threw those on. Okay, my next goal was to organize this miscellaneous hardware section for my dad. I purchased some storage containers first and then designed the section around the containers. Now this section is mostly made up of vertical dividers that have dados on both sides. So to make cutting these faster, I would leave all of the boards as a single board cut in the dados, and then chop it up into the individual vertical divider pieces. I did this for both of the screw box section as well as the miscellaneous hardware section. It's the same process, one is just taller than the other. Then to make up the sides, I used a temporary fence attached to my miter gauge. And I made pencil marks on the temporary fence so I knew where to move my board to cut in these slots. Then it was a matter of putting all of that together. So I started with gluing and screwing on the sides, again pre-drilling, then adding in all of the center dividers. Now to make sure that I was placing these dividers correctly, I would actually use these storage containers that I purchased as the spacing. So I would slide in the containers, butt up the divider against it, make sure that it was square, and then also make sure that the container could easily slide in and out. After getting in all of the dividers, we glued and screwed a top shelf in the place. After screwing it onto the side, I came back with a nail gun to tack in the dividers. And then pretty much just repeated the process for the smaller dividers that make up the screw box section. I know that this shot is really dark, sorry about that. But next we put the section on top of the drawer section and then just screwed it down. Now for our back, I was trying to get away with just one sheet of quarter inch plywood. So I spliced pieces together to make it work. Then I also cut the dividers for the screw box holder section. It probably wouldn't move, but I went ahead and secured it to the studs just in case. Then we went ahead and attached the paint rack holder on top of it. Since I changed the game plan in the middle, the top paint rack section and the bottom section are different widths, 
But of course, if you were building it from the get-go, then you can make it all the same measurement. I'm too short. <laughs> <laughs> so of course you can lower the paint rock section if you're a shorty like me. So now my dad has plenty of space for all of his spray bottles, his paint cans, his tubes of caulk, and all of his miscellaneous hardware as well as those screw boxes. And of course you could always label the front of the containers, but with them being clear it's pretty easy to see what's inside of them. Okay, and that's it. One more section of my dad's garage that's a little bit more organized. Now, if you would like to build one, I have a set of plans that I put together uh, with a material shopping list, a cut list, and all of that on my website at wilkerdews.com. So there's a link in the description if you want to check it out. Now, I also think that this would be really good for a craft room, not just a garage. You know, maybe take out the uh, paint section and just expand on this section. I hope that you're able to get some good use out of this project, and I will see you the next time I'm working on something. Here's some sunscreen to put on. Uh, thanks, Mom. I just had it right there. No, put it on. Mom, I just had it right there. I'm working. Put it on now, or I'm going to put it on for you. Smear it around. Over here. Do you need some on your arms, too? No, Mama. You'll thank me one day. Is anybody else still with this sort of thing? <laughs> Get away. All right, leave me alone. Before you go, let me talk to you about this video's sponsor, which is lynda.com. If you are interested in a free 10-day trial, then you can go to lynda.com slash April. Now, lynda.com is an online learning platform that has over 3,000 video courses available. Now, these are entire courses, not just individual classes. And Lynda offers a very large variety on subjects such as business, education, design, photography, just to name a few. Now, I know most of us utilize YouTube for learning free information. However, I have found it very frustrating whenever I'm trying to learn something very specific, like how to learn a certain computer software, uh, to root around three different YouTube channels trying to find one that delivers accurate and clear information. You don't have to worry about that with Linda because all of the classes are taught by professionals. So I think that it's well worth the monthly one flat fee in order to gain access to the entire library of videos that they offer. You can download the courses and watch them on your own time. And of course, with it all being online based, you can learn at your own pace. So again, if you're interested in trying a free 10 day trial, then go to lynda.com slash April.